I live in North Miami Beach, and a Rebbe from a particular yeshiva in the tri-state area, I won't mention where, it was a, not a regular type of yeshiva. It was for boys who unfortunately were totally, totally disconnected, left the ways of Yiddishkeit, and this Rebbe was a super Rebbe, just trying, trying his hardest. And so he called me and he told me that he promised them for doing whatever it was a few days in Miami. But it wasn't part of it. Part of the trip was not to really include anything religious at all. Different activities, whatever it was, the Rebbe was going to be with them. But he wants to ask them if they would be willing to come and get a shear or a schmooze from me. Would I be willing? I said, of course. He said, okay, I have 17 boys. Please keep in mind and remember that they are totally disconnected. They haven't kept anything for the longest time. It was a heartbreak. 17 of them. I said, my pleasure. Now that week I had an extremely tight and pressing schedule. It was on a Tuesday night. I said, I only have 15 minutes. I'm sorry, I don't have more. 15 minutes Tuesday night before a bunch of shiurim, you could bring them. He was thrilled. I come to shul, I'm ready for the 15 minute schmooze, <clears throat> and the Rebbe greets me in the hall of my shul. He says, is it okay with you? Not everybody showed up. Said, That's fine, I'm not a numbers person, you know. Tyra, Tyra. No problem. How, how, how many showed up? One. One. Yeah, the other 16 went banana boating. Sixteen of them chose banana boating. I said, one? Okay. One. One. One bini. So I gave a different type, very informal. I called him over to my seat. I had him facing me. And for 15 minutes, I shared with him words. I really poured out my heart. I tried to impress upon him that anything that's done is tremendously grandiose in the eyes of Hashem. Don't view it as a small accomplishment. The way heaven counts, it's incredibly large. And I, I was speaking like this for 15 minutes. Tuesday night came and went, and now it's Wednesday. The truth is, I really wanted to know if I impacted him at all. Was he moved by it? So I called up the Rebbe on Wednesday. How are you? Thank you so much for bringing him. No. How was it? So he said to me, and I quote, the boy I brought loved it. Loved it. I melted. I felt so good. Loved it. Was there anything in particular? He said, yes. The cat. I said, the cat? I didn't speak about a cat. He said, I know, I know. In the front of your shul, you have a cat that sits there. And he loves cats. And he stayed for about an hour and a half petting the cat. He loved the cat. I said, no, I mean about me. Was there anything that I said that impacted him? The cat. If you visit me in the shul, you'll see we have a cat that's literally there. He now becomes the most famous cat in the world. He's there day and night. Maybe a gilgul. He's always there. The cat. I went away for Shabbos. I was getting ready for Shabbos. It was by the Project Inspire convention. And my phone rang. Right before leaving to Mincha, I picked up, and it was the Rebbe. He said, you remember me? We spoke two days ago. The first thing I blurted out was, the cat's not for sale! Not for sale! <laughs> and he says, I want to tell you before you go into Shabbos. Remember the boy? I said, of course. He said, you know how disconnected he was. They haven't kept anything for the longest time. He said, Rabbi Shabir, I want you to know that he called me an hour ago and said, Rebbe, I want to keep Shabbos. Can I come to your house for Shabbos? I was thinking long and hard about what Rabbi Shapiro said those 15 minutes. It's not such a small thing, it's a big deal. Can I come for Shabbos? So the Rebbe says, Rabbi Shapiro, I want you to know that this boy is about to keep his first Shabbos in many years. That's the way we have to speak to people. Bini and Shalim.